Uh, we'd have to, Chris Harrington, uh, Interim Environmental Officer, Watershed Protection Department. I'm not sure the timeline that it would take us to actually hire an independent wetland assessor to make that assessment. I can tell you our best wetland biologist who has many years of investigating and delineated wetlands relative to Army Corps regulations, so federal regulations and City of Austin regulations has looked at the feature, has identified it as not a feature, not a wetland feature, not a critical CEF. If it's a wetland under our code, or under um, federal law, it's not that it would preclude um, an impact to that wetland, it would just require mitigation. And so at the time that a site, de uh, site development permit application was submitted based on the nature of the development and the impact of the wetland, then if it is a feature, it could be mitigated. I guess the question that I keep coming back to on that, and every time we raise it, we really never have a chance to delve into it, at least publicly in any great detail, but the, if, if our wetlands biologist has assessed it and determined that they don't believe there's a wetland, but Dr. Nazer can, you know, has provided us with some examples, and I think you're saying that at site plan you could mitigate around it, but what will, what will be the process to do that more thorough evaluation? Will there be any more thorough evaluation between here and there if this amendment does not pass? Uh, absolutely. As part of the site uh permit application, site development permit application process, there would be the typical environmental resource inventory and the assessment. So to the best of my knowledge, the, it would follow current code. And so it's not that it's not necessarily having wetland features. It's not a critical environmental feature under Austin City, also under our land development code. And I can go into more detail on that, but. That's okay for now. Thank you. And I'll, I'll ask some follow-up questions afterward if I need to. The other um, immediate question I had related to environmental mediation, remediation. Um, Mayor. And so I had asked some questions in the Q and A. I think maybe some other colleagues did too about what the estimated cost, what the estimated cost would be, and the answer came back zero. Um, you know, I think I think those of us who asked that question were trying to get a sense of scale. At least I was. You know, our given that remediation has happened on that site, it's everybody's assumption that there's not additional remediation that's needed. However, there were some references to if the foundation is removed, there could be remediation needed under that. Like, what, what is the scale we're talking about? Of just, if you could talk about other projects that are similar, what kind of scale of remediation did they need? I know Council Member Alter's amendment talks about, it sets a cap of 500,000, is that reasonable? You know, does environmental, if there's um, contamination under the foundation, is it gonna be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars? Is it gonna be in the millions? Just, I know I'm asking you a, the, it, really it is, general question, but if you have any sense of scale, um, given your familiarity with other projects. It's incredibly challenging to make that estimate. It would depend on what the nature of the development is at that area, and so it may impact the area or it may not. It would depend on what is actually there and then what those constituents are, which would uh, dictate the nature of any cleanup if necessary. So that site has been extensively investigated. It was scraped to bedrock or native undisturbed material and completely all of that soil gone through. So uh, I think that the conclusions in the environmental assessment are appropriate, that no additional investigation is warranted at this time. Any, any additional investigation that would occur uh, or, or any environmental mitigation or remediation that would be necessary would be entirely dependent upon the nature of the development at those individual locations, whether there were any specific contaminants there, what those specific contaminants were, and what the uh, nature of the remediation would be. So it's really, I, okay. I just can't answer it, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Mayor. Yes, Flanagan. It, has the city ever hired an independent third party assured wetland delineator or the equivalent on projects in the past? The city has not, to the best of my knowledge, no. And, and, and that's because we have on staff a assured wetland delineator? Expert individuals with decades of experience who, uh, again, are the ones who interpret existing current code. And can you recall that when that delineator, when that staffer has uh, identified wetlands, has there ever been a call for an independent third party assured wetland delineator to say that there wasn't a wetland? Not to the best of my knowledge. That's what I thought, thank you. Okay, so let's, let's not get into the merits of these. Let's not get into the merits because we'll be here all night. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. And I'm not gonna ask any more questions about wetlands. I'm trying to make this time productive so that we're asking questions about each other's. Um, but I'm gonna ask another, uh, this is actually a question for uh, PSV. And I wanna better understand, I wanna better understand some of the back and forth 
that's happened around the areas outside the stadium. As I understand, um, your client is open to adjusting the term limit, the term language in the agreement around uh, civic use. So could you explain to me? So the sure. five, so I've made an amendment that would that would specify it's five five uses of the field, but the buildings or the facilities, whatever it is, rooms within the stadium would be accessible to the city or to an entity that we designated, such as the school district, one of the right. school districts, at other times. So the term sheet provides, and we used a term that we, again, we should have known what it meant before we put it in there, but in bowl meant, in our mind, meant five events available to the city that included getting out on the grass. So for instance, if you decided you wanted to give your event to a, the school district, they could have a graduation there. You could cover the grass and you could have it out there. And, and the, the grass uh, is, is a professional field. And we said five of those. As far as the, uh, the facility otherwise, and the facility includes meeting rooms and banquet rooms and seating and atria and all that. As far as those go, where you're not getting on the field, then subject to availability, subject to scheduling, the city could have events in those facilities as well. And not pay for them. And well. And not rent them. Not rent them. The, the, we have expenses and those like kinds of things, and it would be subject to scheduling, yes. And then what about outside? I know Council Member Poole has at least one amendment about the open space and park space, and I know I have a couple, two, or one. I think what the term um, agreement provides for is something like when there aren't scheduled events, it's open to the public. And then several of us ask questions in the Q&A about, well, when is there any are there any definitions of sort of how many times the outside is going to be programmed so that it would be open to the public and, and we haven't, I think the answer was those things haven't been determined. So can you help us understand in the areas outside what the public access would be as it's currently contemplated and um, why, I guess, why if there are scheduled, I would assume that if there are scheduled events in the stadium, in a lot of cases, there's still the possibility of having access, I would hope, to the trail. Yes, to the trail. So we have to go back and start with Precourt Sports Ventures is spending $200 million to build this facility. It's not a charitable donation to the city. It has to be able to money out, let's just say. It has to be able to produce revenue. What we've said on the outdoor spaces is if it's not if there's not a scheduled event on the outdoor space, then it is open to the public. It's, you can throw your Frisbee, you can walk your dog, you can come over and hang out. But if there's a scheduled event, then it might not be available. Now, Council Member Poole's amendment says we can only do that 35 times a year. And that's not acceptable because we don't know what it'll be because we're in the business of trying to make money on this, on this deal. So, when there's not a scheduled event, it will be available to the public to come and hang out. And, and by the way, the, we, you can have an event on the outside that doesn't involve the inside. You, we've already been approached by a promoter that wants to have a, a Hispanic music festival at the facility, which would have, it would be a festival both in and out and, and around the uh, facility. And that would be a time where if you were participating in the festival, you'd be there, but if not, it wouldn't be available to the public. And that would, were there a festival, if there was a, an emission-based festival going on outside, would that limit access to the pedestrian trail necessarily? Not necessarily. We could look at the trail because there's another amendment somewhere in here about attempting to connect to the Walnut mine. Creek yeah. Trail. And what we could do is design the trail to where even during an admission-based event, the trail could be available. And, and preferably connect to, and I think the intent of, my, of that amendment is to make sure that it's connected to the Walnut Creek Trail so that we can, among other things, um, encourage people to bike mm -hmm. to this And that's, site. that's something that was new tonight, and we're going to look at that. Yes. Mayor? Councilor Poole. 
since Mr. Suttles here, can you tell us what the Hispanic Music Festival is? Well, we've just been approached by a promoter that says that they'd like to approach us when we get this approved to have one. And okay, um, just to be clear, the reason why I'm asking about uh, the additional time um, in the bowl is because you were only programming about 17, about 33 events. So it looked like a whole lot of the time at that stadium was going to be available. And, and I just have to say, um, I don't appreciate um, characterizing any of my colleagues or my amendments as poison pills. I think that's disrespectful to the process that we're trying to do here. I think the amendments, all of them that are being offered, are trying to answer concerns that have been raised throughout, uh, throughout the public comment period and what people have been telling us both privately and in emails to our offices. So I, please refrain from uh, the kind of damning terminology that poison pill represents. I do have some questions on the term sheet, so I'll go ahead and run through them. I'll try to keep it quick. Um, Mayor? Hang on one second. I'm going to respond to that, but I'm going to let her finish her questions. Go ahead. You want to you want to respond to the poison pill statement? I do. Oh, feel free. I don't think that a poison pill is a disrespectful term. A poison pill is a request that is is a request such that if it were granted, it would kill the deal. That's what a poison pill is. And and at some point, we're trying to find the balance. If if what we want is a venue and an activity that pulls everybody from the community together in ways that, that do not happen now. And if that's the goal that ultimately we're trying to achieve, and in order to achieve that, somebody has to invest $200 million in order to build it, recognizing that it then has to work. In fact, we want it to work. We, we, we need it to work in order for that venue we need, it, we need it to work in order for that venue to, to exist and to be there for the community benefit. So if I so load the economics of the deal such that it can't survive, then, then, then I don't get to deliver for the community the benefit I want. A poison pill would be a request that rises to a level that means that it's no longer economically viable. It can't work. Sure, I, I, I know exactly what poison pill means, and um, if you want to take the rail station as an example of that, I would maintain that it, that, in fact, is not something that would make a deal on that land economically not viable because we had at least two or three alternate development proposals come before us on Tuesday that were offering up to build a train station uh, to benefit the city and Cap Metro without asking for any in and, and we can and we can debate and I'm sure we'll debate on Wednesday whether any particular thing is a poison pill or not but but it, it's legitimate for me to say I think that's a poison pill and it's a legitimate thing for you to say you don't think it is but but in saying that I think it's a poison pill is not something I think that that violates any of the decorum or the process it's me saying I think that some of the things being offered by their terms would mean that the, the, the whole enterprise wouldn't work. But we can debate whether or not that's true in any particular situation, and I'm sure we'll probably disagree on some. I, I, I think that's true. We will, we will disagree on that point. Okay. So I, I had a couple of questions, and I know that Councilmember Troxclair was trying to get in there too, so I don't know if you want to just jump in and I'll call back and ask my questions next. Well, I, I don't want to stop you if this is the direction that we're going, but we've already spent about 20 minutes um, on this topic. So if, if, I mean, if there's truly questions that need to be answered tonight, then right. let's get them answered quickly. But if I don't want to repeat the same, now that we've decided we're going to meet on Wednesday and talk about it, I don't want to have the conversation tonight and on Wednesday, especially knowing that we have ballot language that we have to get to today. Good point. Thanks. Let's, if, if there's questions for information that we need to get from either the staff or pre-court, or this is the time to be able to ask those kind of information questions. My questions were information. Okay, go ahead and do them as quickly as you can. We'll go through so we can get to the ballot language. Uh, 
I'm looking at the changes on stadium design, page six. It says, specifies that Stadium Co. will reasonably work with the city to explore options for sustainable design. And the new provision under the revised term sheet says, specifies that Stadium Co. will work with the city on feasible options for sustainable design. Is that a change or is that a no change? And the language difference is, will reasonably work with the city to explore options versus will work with the city on feasible options. And if, that, and, and if it is no real change, what is the reason for the language difference? And while he's looking for that, I have my questions run, run similarly. And I would be happy to pause this line of questioning in uh, if we were going to take up the ballot language, <laughs> which I'm still advocating that we take care of pretty soon. And if I could engage these questions on Wednesday. They're in the same vein. There are changes to the language in the term sheet um, that seem like they're really no change, and so I want, I, I want to understand what is the change. There's another one, governmental regulatory processes is the new language when it was before just governmental processes, which seems to actually have impact, but I'm not sure of the impact. So, so Mr. Mayor, yes. would it be helpful or uh, useful um, for those of us who have uh, some additional questions to just meet with staff, you know, tomorrow or the next day so that we come prepared on Wednesday with our questions answered? I, I know that staff has offered to come around and answer some of my specific questions. It's I just, think people are biting at the bit to try to get to the ballot language. Uh, is there a quick answer to that question? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Poole, the uh, language you were making reference to regarding reasonable and feasibility Right, on stadium design. On stadium design. Uh, one of the things we tried to do in, in going back through the term sheet was address some of the concerns that council expressed last week about the language being fuzzy or not clear enough. Uh, and, and that these re were more requirements than hopeful uh, endeavors by the team. So the reason we changed this, uh, we didn't want to say reasonably work Stadium Co. will work with the staff and they'll look for feasible options on sustainable design. We don't know what those are yet. They're still going through the design process. There's still a lot to work through on that. So we are looking, you know, we're going to work with them to find feasible ways to address the city's concerns on sustainable design to minimize waste, net energy, and net water status. Then on item eight, page eight, budget. Um, it changed from specifies that site preparation costs are not included in the budgeted cost, and the new language specifies that site preparation costs are included in the budgeted cost, and that looks to me like that shifted the cost from Precor over to the city of Austin. No, they are responsible for all budgeted costs, so it went from being a city cost to a stadium co cost. Very good. <laughs> so I will... Um, in the interest of time, I'll put these together, and I think what you suggested, Councilmember Kitchen, is a good one. But that gives you an idea about the kinds of questions that I have. Okay, Ms. Houston. Yes, I asked a question. Uh, it seems like weeks ago now about the major trust. Mr. Canale, could you uh, talk to about why this project may or may not be eligible for the major special events trust or major trust? Yeah. Great, Kylo, Economic Development. Uh, the Major Events Trust Fund is a fund to uh, a state, it's a state of Texas program that funds events. Um, and they're special events that can only occur once per year. They can be multi-year, but they can only be once per year. Uh, they allow a municipality to get reimbursed for costs of uh, a special event. So you need to have a venue to create an event. So you can't use the Special Events Trust Fund to fund the venue, but once you have a venue, you may be able to apply for a special event, and the statute has some events that are named. So World Cup's coming to, Austria, to the U.S. in, I can't remember what year it is. Stadium's probably too small for World Cup, but theoretically, 
if you were able to attract the World Cup, and that might be something that would be eligible. But building the stadium would not be eligible. And the state has no other uh, revenue stream that's been set aside to help build or develop infrastructure like a stadium? The, sorry, the I didn't state. quite hear. The state mm -hmm. program? No. Not that we're aware of. Even though it has to do with economic development for the city? No. Uh, for the state. I mean, it's an economic development uh, engine for the state. The Events Trust Fund is the one that we're aware That's of. That's the only one it's, that you're aware It's events-based. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yes, Councilmember Alder. Um, I will try to... I'll try to limit my questions and make them as fast as possible. A uh, question for staff, probably legal. Um, what happens if Stadio Co. defaults on its private financing? Stadio Co. is like a shell. It doesn't have any assets, as far as I can tell. What happens if it defaults? Council member, there's probably two answers to your question. Um, as far as PSV defaulting on their private financing, um, I mean, I haven't looked at their loan documents, but my guess is the bank will have some kind of step in rights to uh, make sure they get paid back. So they will step into the shoes of Stadco or, or someone else and, and still maintain the obligations and try to get their money back. From the city's perspective, um, we have the system set up currently in the term sheet where all the obligations to the city are guaranteed by PSV slash the club. So the city is protected in its obligations by someone other than Stadium Co. Okay, I'm going to think about that one and watch that again. Um, can you explain the ancillary development clauses? So like after 10 years, the city can do something. And what is PSV? or Stadio Co. allowed to build according to those ancillary um, development rules. And you know, a lot of those things are not in the pretty picture that we've seen. Um, help me understand what that's agreeing to. Well, I, I think the, the basic idea is, is they, they have some concepts. Uh, I don't think they have a final plan for ancillary development. And that's why we put in language that anything they do has to be brought back to the city for approval. But in terms of um, financial share, I mean, you know, if I don't know what they're going to dream up, but if there were, you know, do we have any claim on the financial revenue streams from that or? No, I mean, the, the idea of sizing rent was to get the economics for the city in a rent payment. Uh, the city will get property tax revenue from those uh, developments and also sales tax and whatever else is generated out of that ancillary development. So um, for that ancillary development, would there not need to be an RFP? I, I didn't hear the last part. How do, it seems to get around our requirements for RFPs on city land. Well, I believe the, the idea is that the Stadium Co. is leasing the site, which is all 24 acres. So we're, we're not getting around anything. That's the deal. They are, they are getting the entire site as part of the deal. But there's no RFP for the areas where they do ancillary development. I, I mean, I can't speak to that because there's, there's not an RFP for the building. I mean, we are, the idea is that you are going to lease the stadium site, which is all 24 acres to Stadium Co. That's the deal on the table. I understand it's the deal. I'm trying to understand how we satisfy our, our legal responsibility to have RFPs. I mean, I can't speak to that, but I'll let the city attorney do that. So there's no legal requirement for an RFP for a lease of this of this 20 year to 50 year term. Okay. That's the answer. Okay, thank you. And then my last I you guys can laugh, but we have to understand the details here, and I appreciate a little more decorum. That was an entirely appropriate question. Please, Leonard Duck. 
Um, so my last question is for, uh, I guess, for Mr. Suttle. Um, we've talked about in the bowl, and there'd be 17 to 20 events plus the five. Um, help me understand what the plans are for the other events and what kind of other events would be in the bowl and how often and how frequent and what kind of constraints are there from the grass or not, um, because I'm just not understanding the level of use of this stadium throughout the year, and I would like some more details. I understand from some answers to my questions that the term sheets allows you to have whatever events you want, um, but, I, but I don't understand what you have planned. Well, we can't even imagine everything, but we'll have games, we'll have exhibition matches, we could have concerts, we could have uh, meetings, um, whatever event might be appropriate for in, in a stadium setting. How many would you be able to do in the bowl? I mean, if you have, I mean, I, I just, you know, how many a week is that? I, I, I need some sense of magnitude of, of how often and. And we don't know. Okay, but I thought you've, you've been talking about this, the grass being a, this constraint and that constraint. I mean, does that place limits on those numbers, or is it, you it know, does. 300 days a year you're going to have things no, in the bowl? It, it absolutely does, but we placed a five, a five use of grass limit on the city. I, it. I understand that part. I'm trying to understand the other times that you would use the bowl for non-MLS events. How often would that happen? And we don't know. Okay, you can't give me a ballpark? No, I mean, is it 15? Is it 100? Is it 200? I, I, I don't have it. I don't know. So we have to provide, you're going to pay for it, but we have to provide you um, police support and all of that other stuff for those other things. No. So who's going who's gonna to do the traffic for I you on those other nights? It, I believe. I mean, we're not paying for it, but we still, our officers are got to be on. I mean. No, I, under the term sheet, you're doing police for games only. That's it. But who's, who's going to do the security and the traffic and all the other stuff? I'm not saying that we're paying for it, but who, who's actually, how is that taken care of so that we have the appropriate services for those other events? Based just like every other event we have this, in this city, all the big events, the many. It's based on the availability of the police officers or the availability of the security personnel at our cost. No different than every other event in this city. Okay. So you can't give me an answer to how many other events beyond the 25 that are in there that would happen in the bowl in that location? I cannot. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem. So uh, one is I just noticed a slight discrepancy with regard to ticket distribution between the community benefit sheet and the term and the other part of the term of the term sheet. And so that got replicated, that discrepancy um, snowballed into mine. So I'm going to clear that up um, at some point. I think it was 100. The term sheet talks about 100 tickets per game directly to the city. And then the community benefits sheet talked about it diff talked about it total, and, and it didn't quite it doesn't quite align. So, for the ticket distribution directly to the city, I'm going to amend my amendment so that it's consistent. Um, and then I had a question. Let's see what was it. Ah, so we we were given a draft. Thank you to our sustainability office for working on a draft sustainability terms and so I, I it would just help me and, and we don't need to resolve that now but it would help me to know what role this will play in the term sheet and and so that's the substance of the amendment well the amendment that I think I proposed here talked about making that part of something that comes back to council but I embedding it into the term agreements would also work for me I don't know the substance of the conversations you've had to this point Lucia Athens, Chief Sustainability Officer. Uh, Council Member, uh, the document that reads recommendations from the Office of Sustainability that you have revised today, um, this was intended to be supplemental and in support of the term sheet that you already had. Um, and 
what I was trying to do with this language was to provide some feasible options related to the um, goals that council had set in the previous resolution to just add some uh, additional uh, option language. So I think, you know, um, well, one thing I'll just say really quickly is that um, it probably should read recommendations and not terms. I think it would be, it would be a supplemental item. I got it, thank you. Okay, so these are not yet, so as I understand it, and by the way, I appreciate it, have it as the author of those bullet points in the resolution, I really appreciate you taking the time to look, to make some recommendations about how the stadium could meet those objectives. As I understand what you're explaining, these are not currently agreed upon terms in the term sheet these are recommendations for specifics that could help us meet the original aims of the resolution. That's correct, council member. These have not been negotiated. Okay, thank you. So that I would just highlight that as something that I would like to look into, look look at more carefully the recommendations and talk about because one of one of the things I've mentioned a few times is needing needing to see some of these goals um, being met in the term sheet. So I'm signaling that while it's not on a yellow sheet that's been distributed, it is Understood. consistent with my previous um, area of focus. I consider that to be daylighted. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or amendments people want to daylight? I have a question for a colleague. Mayor, as I mentioned earlier, mine, we're still getting uh, printed just so everybody has them before Wednesday. Um, but again, they just tie down uh, affordability requirements for the affordable housing that's already been committed to by the team and the date by which it has to open. It ties down the exact language on the labor peace agreement that has already been agreed to. Um, it asks for uh, check-in meetings with the nearby community after construction just so that there can be conversation if there's any issues. And then finally, in addition to the free tickets that had already been offered by the team, it, when we took our first, first vote, we talked about uh, family pack and discount tickets like there is in Houston. The team said they would do a thousand discount tickets on top of the 1,000 free tickets. So this memorializes those 1,000 discount tickets on top of the thousand free tickets with at least 200 of those 1,000 discount tickets being under $20 uh, and, uh, and sets up a, a good citizen club committee to figure out how we best make sure the free tickets and discount tickets get out there to the community. <coughs> Okay, thank you for daylighting that. <clears throat> yes, Mayor Pro Tem. I have um, a question for one of my colleagues about her amendment, and that is Councilmember Troxclair. You have distributed an amendment, uh, let's see, it's number two, about a surcharge. As I understand the amendment you're making, this would, this is, this is separate from and, in, and would be in addition to the surcharge that's been discussed to generate money for cap metro for a rail slash transportation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, and one one other issue I would just daylight, and it's reflected in my amendment that I've put forward that relates to the trail, is that I I'm not seeing any language in the term sheet or in the transportation discussions we've had about how the site would encourage um, would encourage biking walking that I, I know that's certainly woven through our discussions but I think it would be helpful to have some concrete language about that anything else it looks like a lot of these requests load up on on surcharges and, and extra ticket fee taxes and 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 and, and fund taxes, um, we need to take a look at those. We need to look at them holistically. Um, you know, I think that uh, I've, I've seen one that, that, that makes sense to me, which I first reading is Council Member Garza's uh, amendment. Um, but we need to take a look at them and again. We just need to see what delivers the greatest benefit for the community, but still lets this work. Uh, any comments before we move on to the next item, Councilmember Poole? I wanted to check on Councilmember Kassar's item about the affordable housing. Um, 
and I want to make sure that if that something is built there, that it that it actually is able to stay for the duration. Um, because on a ancillary agreements, if, if VSV is only committing to 20 or 50, 20 to 50 years, then what happens to any other development after that? Would would they get kicked out? Um, what would happen? So I don't know if that's something that would be that we can answer, but I think we need to absolutely address thank that. Thank you for raising that question, and we will work on it. Good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else, Councilmember Garza? Um, I, I'll just daylight my amendment really quick, which was an issue that I that wasn't in the term sheet previously that I had concerns about, um, and that was investment in our transit. And I believe we have an agreement on this one with. Um, all parties, and that is that they will construct per cap metro's design and approval the bus station not to exceed $640,000 in addition to, um, as well as, contribute $3 million over the period of 15 years per cap metro to use to enhance the transit. Um, and then, generally speaking, as we move into Wednesday, I I'd be curious if, if we can come up with some kind of spreadsheet where we look, we see the amendments and we know whatever you want to call it, poison pill, whatever, is something. Because the reality is there, there's not just one party to this agreement. There's several parties. And if, if, if one party is not, is, is, doesn't agree, then it can't be. It, it doesn't make sense to even be considering it. And and, it, and you know we have, we deal with the same thing when we have big PUDs or zoning um, cases where, you know, I would want 500 units of affordable housing, but I know that if if we require 500 of units of affordable housing, the deal's not going to happen. And so it's, do you accept zero and not have that development, or do you accept the 150 that's there? And so. It's just a really tough position to be in to say, I don't want more money for the county. I don't want, and that because that's not true. Of course, I would want as much as possible out of this deal, and that's what I've been looking for the best deal. But at the end of the day, this is an agreement, and so you know, I think that I think we need some kind of document to see what is really off the table. Because if it's off the table, um, that's something we need to know. Um, we, we, we need to know the, the, the reasonable, not even reasonable, but the, just the things that we can, that are on the table still. Um, otherwise, we're going to be going way past noon on Wednesday um, about these amendments. Council Member Greg Canale Finance, um, I think that's an excellent suggestion, and I think the value of having all of these amendments um, in word, we will, I think, from a, in order just to even update the term sheet, we want to have a compendium of all of these, and we, we can put them in a spreadsheet, and we can get them out um, for everyone to see in advance of Wednesday. It'll be a valuable exercise for both the staff and PSV from a negotiating perspective, and I think for council and certainly for the public. So it's a great suggestion, and we'll get working on it. Mayor. <coughs> Mr. Lanigan. So I, I'd just like to concur with Councilmember Garza's statements. We, we see this a lot. I've seen this a lot. I'll just put it in, in I terms. I've seen this a lot on cases before this body where there are proposals made that make the math break. And whether or not the final deal is worth doing, it has to be a deal that's actually a deal. So I hope that, you know, my hope was to get this thing up or down tonight. Um, I think we've done or will, we are contemplating more special called meetings on an item than maybe since the 90s. And uh, I hope that we can, we can close the deal either with a closed door or, or an open door on Wednesday, but that whatever we finally decide on, it's because we understood the math and then decided if the math added up, but not because we operate from some kind of crazy new math. So that's what I hope we can get to on Wednesday. Is there a motion to postpone this item until next Wednesday, uh, 9 o'clock? Um, I so move. And uh, we're closing the public hearing. Yeah. It's just going to be a work session. Uh, and I would invite people to, to continue to bring in uh, amendments even up till midnight. Special Mayor, Special call. Not a work session. 
Yes. Th that's what I want to clarify. Right now, I've got Council Member Garza's amendment. I have Council Member Poole's six amendments. I have Count Mayor Pro Tem's amendments that okay. are not numbered. I believe it's Council Member Troxclair's where she jumps the rent to 900 and something thousand. Poole, Poole, has, Poole has six. Okay. Alter has three. Troxclair has four. Um, uh, the Mayor Pro Tem has 11 on her pages. Council Member Garza has amendments in capital, one page in capital, and Cap Council Member Kassar. Okay, so I do not have Council Member Alters at all. Okay. And Would I you? have, I believe, one of Council Member So I'll, okay. however and I can get those would be great. We'll get, you, we'll get you a package if you don't have it. And I need to clarify that we had a numbering issue. So technically I have 12, <laughs> and the 12th um, has multiple within that category. But just to underscore what, what I think um, came out of the last part of the discussion, I believe some of these are agreed upon. It, as I understood, Councilmember Kassar and Councilmember Garza, several of their elements are agreed upon changes. Um, and, and the same is true in my amendment package. Some of these are also agreed upon and were actually, um, were actually responses from, from pre court. So. so as soon as you could do that, uh, Greg, is to get kind of a master list of this out to everybody or and then to indicate on it which things uh, the staff is recommending that we do and uh, and the, the Major League Soccer uh, is, is amenable to doing so that people preparing for Wednesday's meeting can, can see that. I think that that would be helpful. Okay. I'll have copies for mine and for him in a second. Yes. Uh, Mayor, yeah, I think that again, we can, we will endeavor to get that done as soon as possible. And again, I think the value of having all of these is we would then treat this um, just to make sure we have an understanding as our final negotiation with the team on those events, on those each of those particular ones, so that when we came back next Wednesday, we would be able to identify where they, where again, this is a, this is a negotiation, and we want to be able to have reach agreement like we have on the previous. Um, okay. The previous thing, so we will we will do to that. The degree, to the degree you can tell us even before next Wednesday the things that they've agreed to, so that we know that that would be helpful. Absolutely. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to second that. I'd like to All second right. it. The motion's been moved. It's been seconded. Any further discussion? Ms. Houston. So, Mr. Saddle, could, could you tell me what, what the timeline is? You said that you're going to have to ask for an extension. I'm not sure what the extension is about. So the MLS had told us that we needed to be able to show that we had a stadium site in Austin, Texas by, I believe it was the end of June, July 1, because we were unable to get that done. We had to go to the MLS and get an extension. They extended that until tomorrow, I believe. And so now we have to go back to New York and tell them that we were unable to reach an agreement again and we will have to ask for an extension until next week and so if the MLS doesn't give you all an extension what does that do to um, this proposal then Austin will be without an MLS team okay and so you know my concern has always been about the legal issues in Ohio mm -hmm. and so um, again I'm gonna ask you for the record because some of these same people haven't been here before uh, what is the status of the legal issue in Ohio? There's uh, a bunch of lawyers in Ohio going back and forth, but our assessment of it is it is, does not have an impact on what we do here in Austin, Texas to bring a team and get a stadium site. So I'm not gonna use the same analogy as I did the last time. We were here. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are too young to get it, but I still have that same concern. I have a problem thinking about executing an agreement with a team that has not satisfied their legal issues in another state. Well, our position is we have satisfied our legal, our legal positions in Columbus. And um, if, if pre-court sports ventures thought that what is going on in Ohio would affect what we're doing here tonight, we wouldn't put you through this. 
and we wouldn't bring make all these folks that are not used to coming down to city council meetings come down here so often and so late. We are confident this has to be the first thing that happens, and then that enables a whole bunch of other things to happen that potentially could make that legal situation go away. So we've got to, the city of Austin has got to agree to this, the term sheets and ne negotiate and execute. And if that happens, then whatever the issues are in Columbus will go away. Those can be worked on and it provides the impetus for those things to be worked on and to go away. I, I, There's no magic. If you vote tonight, if you vote tonight, it does not mean that the law, the legal rambling process. goes away tomorrow. But what it does is it, it enables all the parties to work towards that. And that doesn't seem to have a shadow over it, that all those negotiations? Well, lawsuits always have a shadow over something, but it doesn't, it doesn't affect what we're doing here. And if, let me just tell you, tonight, if, if it had been voted on to negotiate and execute tonight, Anthony Precourt has said that tomorrow he is turning on the spigot for the engineers and the architects to start designing this facility. <laughs> He's not going to do that until we have a deal on the stadium site where he doesn't have to keep coming back here and bringing all these folks down and having these long meetings. He needs some certainty. And that's all we're asking for. And I guess that's what I'm asking for, some certainty. Mm -hmm. Mayor. Hey, Council member, I, I just want to expand on Mr. Suttle's comments. Um, we did hear you last week, uh, and I am old enough to get your analogy. Um, we added some language to the termination clause of the term sheet to deal with that. So um, if MLS hasn't approved the relocation of the team by a certain date, which we will set in the stadium lease and development agreement, you'll have the right to terminate the deal. So we haven't picked that date yet, but we did hear you, and there will be a date in the lease that'll give you the right to terminate if they haven't been approved for relocation. Thank you for clarifying that. Anything else before we move on? Councilor Garza? I, just quickly, I, I was prepared to vote tonight. Either, either way, I was prepared to vote tonight. So I'm just asking if on Wednesday, we can agree to give the community some finality. So by 1130, stop discussing and take a vote. I think the community deserves an answer to this. I concur with that. Councilmember Flanagan. So one of my favorite things about this process so far, and I've expressed many of my least favorite things about this process so far, but my most favorite thing are the number of people who I'm seeing engage with City Hall who I've never seen before. And I want to encourage you regardless of what side of the issue you're on, because I'm seeing new people on all the sides. But I want to encourage you to register to vote. And I want this to not be the last time you engage with City Hall. I am going to need your suddenly, help. Suddenly the snapping stops. Well, there you go. <laughs> but I, I, just for myself, I'm going to need your help to build affordable housing in this town. Because when we try to build affordable housing, I hear the same complaints that, oh, we like affordable housing, but traffic. We like affordable housing, but parking. We like affordable housing, but we like affordable housing, but. And I need your help, not just on this deal, but on all the deals, because all the deals matter to the city. And I know all of us care about the city. Okay. Let's take a vote. Those in favor? Mayor Pro Tem, did you want to say something? We're postponing till Wednesday, special call, 9 o'clock. It's been moved and seconded. We ready to take the vote? Mayor Pro Tem, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I know we're getting some emails and there's been some discussion about what um, message this sends to MLS. And I would, I guess the message I would send to MLS is that it's late and we're, we could certainly stay and work through all these amendments and make a decision, but... Um, that we're committed to make one next week. Okay. I'm too committed. I think I'm looking at the dais. People are shaking their heads. I think everybody's agreed that 1130 tomorrow on Wednesday, we're going to call for a vote. And, and, and wherever we are, we're going to call for a vote and we'll be done. So let's work rapidly on Wednesday because 1130, I'm going to move the question. Um, anything else? I'd like to move this question now. <laughs> Those in favor of the postponement, please raise your hand. Those opposed, unanimous on the dais. 
Thank you all. And if you all would leave quietly so we can keep going here in our last 45 minutes, I'd appreciate it. But thank you very much for coming.